Welcome to MCA's presentation of Respiratory Protection in Healthcare Settings. This presentation addresses the identification, implementation, and use of respirators in healthcare settings. In certain situations, healthcare workers may need to be protected from airborne hazards, including infectious agents, in their workplace. Respirators are a type of personal protective equipment, or PPE, that can protect you from breathing in such hazards. After viewing this video, you should have a basic understanding of when respirators are used in the healthcare industry, why they are necessary, and how to properly use them when required. You should also understand that a standard or law issued by OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or by an OSHA-approved state plan, requires employers to have a comprehensive respiratory protection program whenever respirator use is required. OSHA requires that you understand how to use a respirator and understand the major components of a respiratory protection program. This training is not a substitute for worksite-specific training you may receive. While this presentation discusses the requirements under OSHA's respiratory protection standard, remember that the primary purpose of a respirator is to protect your health and safety. So let's begin. Let's talk about airborne hazards. Airborne hazards come in multiple forms, such as solid particles like dusts, droplets like mists, or even gases. When these hazards are present in your workplace, they are controlled in several ways, including engineering controls, work practice controls, and administrative controls. When workers cannot be adequately protected from respiratory hazards through engineering, work practice, and administrative controls, then personal protective equipment, also known as PPE, is provided. Respirators are a type of PPE used to protect workers against breathing airborne hazards, and they are often used in conjunction with other types of PPE, such as gloves, goggles, and procedure gowns. The primary type of respiratory hazards in healthcare settings are categorized as airborne infectious agents. Examples where use of respirators in healthcare settings might be required would be protection from diseases such as tuberculosis, SARS, pandemic influenza, chickenpox, and measles. Healthcare workers may be exposed to these hazards during the care of patients suspected or confirmed to have airborne transmissible diseases. When they are present during aerosol-generating medical procedures on suspected or confirmed infectious individuals, or when they transport infectious patients in an enclosed vehicle. Direct patient care may not be the only situation where respiratory protection may be needed to protect workers against airborne transmission. For example, maintenance staff may be exposed during tasks such as replacing filters or working in high-risk areas. When a respirator is required to be used, your employer must develop and implement a comprehensive respiratory protection program. A comprehensive program is designed to meet the requirements of either federal or state OSHA's respiratory protection standard. A comprehensive respiratory protection program will identify and evaluate hazards, develop a written operations program, properly select respirators, evaluate respirator use, correct any problems with respirator use, conduct medical evaluations, medical clearance, and fit testing. Provide for the maintenance, storage, and cleaning of respirators. Provide training. And provide access to specific records and documents, such as a written copy of the Respiratory Protection Program. Let's talk about the differences between a respirator and surgical masks. Did you know surgical masks do not provide the same protection as respirators? Respirators and surgical masks are both types of personal protective equipment, or PPE, that can be used to protect workers in healthcare settings. However, a surgical mask is not a respirator. This is an important distinction for us to understand, so let's review the significant differences between a respirator and a surgical mask. So what is a respirator? A respirator is a type of personal protective equipment designed to reduce your exposure to airborne contaminants. Respirators are available in different types and sizes, and the appropriate respirator will be individually selected to fit your face and to provide a tight seal. A proper seal between your face and the respirator forces inhaled air to be pulled through the respirator's filtering material, 
and not through gaps in between their face and the respirator. If your assigned duties require you to use a respirator, it must be a NIOSH certified device, and it must be used in accordance with the Comprehensive Respiratory Protection Program. OSHA's Respiratory Protection Standard, 29 CFR 1910.134, is the rule which includes but is not limited to medical evaluations, fit testing, and training elements. Remember that respirators are used to protect healthcare workers against airborne infectious diseases, such as tuberculosis and SARS, because they protect against both large and small particles. What is a face mask? A face mask is a loose-fitting, disposable mask that covers your nose and mouth. Surgical masks, dental masks, medical procedure masks, isolation masks, and laser masks are all types of face masks. Face masks are used primarily to stop large droplets from being spread by the person wearing them, whether that person is a patient or a healthcare worker. Face masks may also minimize splashes or sprays from reaching the mouth and nose of the person wearing them. Remember, face masks are not designed or certified to seal tightly against your face or prevent the inhalation of small airborne contaminants like respirators. During inhalation, small airborne contaminants may pass through gaps between the face and the face mask or even the material of the face mask. Face masks should never be considered respirators as they do not provide respiratory protection. Only face masks that are cleared by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, the FDA for short, may be legally marketed in the United States. A KN95 is a device that may be found in healthcare settings. In order to understand where the KN95 fits into healthcare operations, we must answer a few questions. Is a KN95 considered to be a respirator? Do I have to be fit tested to wear a KN95? What is the difference between a KN95 and the N95? N95s and KN95s meet different specifications and are approved by different agencies. N95 respirators are approved in the United States by the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, or NIOSH for short. An actual N95 respirator will always have NIOSH, or NIOSH approved, printed on the mask itself. This verifies the N95 meets the NIOSH criteria for respirators and is acceptable for use as a respirator. In contrast, KN95 masks will never be NIOSH approved. N95s and KN95s have different designs. The face piece portion of the N95 can be both foldable and non-foldable designs. An N95 has two head straps. One strap goes around the crown of the head and the other goes around the neck below the ears. The face piece portion of the KN95 is usually a foldable design. KN95s have ear loop straps instead of straps going around the head. N95s and KN95s are not equal. Each is used for different situations. An N95 is a respirator and must be used in accordance with an OSHA-required respiratory protection plan, used for situations such as caring for known or suspected infectious disease patients or exposures to other infectious airborne diseases. KN95s are used as a well-fitting face mask. They are often used as an enhanced source control to prevent the spread of disease by the wearer. KN95s offer greater protection than surgical face masks or other non-respirators. Basic Requirements If you are required to wear an N95, you must complete a medical questionnaire, be medically cleared, trained, and fit-tested in accordance with OSHA requirements. If using an N95 respirator voluntarily, employees must have additional training on donning and doffing, positive and negative pressure checks. KN95s may be worn when the employer requires enhanced source control or the employee chooses to wear voluntarily. You must continue to adhere to CDC, CMS guidelines. Wearing a KN95 does not require medical clearance or fit testing. In summary, an N95 provides respiratory protection. A KN95 is not a respirator. Let's talk about respirator selection. 
Your employer is responsible for selecting appropriate respirators when they are needed to protect you from airborne hazards. Selection is based primarily on the level of protection that a particular type of respirator can provide. Did you know? Not all respirators provide the same level of protection. The truth is that different types of respirators protect against different hazards and offer varying levels of protection. You will be using filtering face piece respirators, often referred to as N95 respirators. N95 respirators come in a variety of configurations such as cup-shaped, flat fold, and duck bill. Because this is a tight-fitting respirator, it needs to be fit-tested to assure a good face seal. This type of respirator is commonly used by healthcare providers during high-risk patient care. Filtering face piece respirators do not protect against gaseous chemical hazards, such as formaldehyde and glutaraldehyde, and must not be used for such purposes. Other types of respirators include elastomeric half face piece respirators, elastomeric full face piece respirators, powered air purifying respirators, otherwise known as PAPRs, and self-contained breathing apparatus, SCBA. As previously stated, when respiratory protection is required, employers must provide workers with respirators certified by the National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health, or NIOSH for short. To see if your respirator is NIOSH certified, look for the NIOSH logo, as well as the Test and Certification Approval Number, or TC number. These can be found on the respirator's package or use instruction insert, and sometimes they appear directly on respirator components, such as the respirator filter. If your respirator is not NIOSH certified, do not use it in a hazardous area. Did you know it is not okay to decorate, write on, or otherwise alter your respirator to make it look more appealing? You must never alter your respirator. Altering a device can reduce its protective quality and expose you to the airborne hazard. Never glue or staple things to your respirator. Don't write on your respirator's filter material, and you must never puncture holes in your respirator. In fact, OSHA requires that respirators be used only in ways that comply with the conditions of their NIOSH certification. Only practices that do not affect the respirator's ability to protect you are allowed, such as writing your name on the respirator straps. Did you know not everyone can wear a respirator? Not everyone is medically able to wear a respirator. Before you use a respirator, you must be evaluated to determine if you are medically able to wear it. Some personal health conditions that may prevent you from using a respirator include heart conditions, lung disease, and psychological conditions like claustrophobia. A physician or other licensed healthcare professional, such as a registered nurse or physician's assistant, must perform a medical evaluation that considers your health and your specific job description. The evaluation can be as simple as using the medical questionnaire contained in Appendix C of OSHA's Respiratory Protection Standard. The medical questionnaire is designed to identify general medical conditions that could place a worker at risk of serious medical consequences if a respirator is used. It's important to answer the questions truthfully. Based on your answers to the questionnaire, the doctor or licensed healthcare professional may decide that a medical examination or tests are necessary to determine if you can safely wear a respirator. Your responses to the medical questionnaire are always confidential. After the medical evaluation, the physician or licensed healthcare professional will provide you and your employer with a written recommendation. It will state three things. First, your ability to wear a respirator and any functional limitations on your use of certain types of respirators. Second, the need, if any, for follow-up medical evaluations. And third, a statement that the doctor or licensed healthcare professional has provided you with a copy of their written recommendation. Your completed questionnaire is typically maintained by the physician or licensed healthcare professional. If your employer maintains these records, then your employer must keep this information confidential and filed separately from your non-health-related personnel files. A fit testing process is used to determine if the respirator is functioning as designed. If your respirator doesn't fit properly, contaminated air can leak into the face piece and you will not be protected. It's that simple. Remember, a tight-fitting respirator must form and maintain a tight seal with the face or neck in order to protect the wearer from airborne hazards. 
So before you wear a tight-fitting respirator in the workplace, you must be fit-tested with the specific make, model, style, and size of that respirator. The purpose of fit testing is to be sure that the face piece of the selected respirator fits adequately to your unique facial characteristics. Some people cannot be fitted with a particular respirator. They may require a different make, model, or size of respirator. So what is a fit test? A fit test is designed to test the face piece to face seal of the respirator. It can be either qualitative or quantitative and uses a test agent or instrument to verify the respirator's fit. Your respirator must be fit tested before you use it in the workplace, and you must be retested at least annually to ensure a continued good fit. You must also be retested whenever you have a significant change in weight, significant dental work such as dentures, significant facial surgery, or significant scarring of the face in the area of the seal. You should notify your employer of any changes or conditions that may affect your ability to wear your respirator. When you've completed the fit testing process, it's very important that you know which make, model, and size respirator fits your face properly, and when and where you'll need to wear it for protection. Since no single respirator can be expected to fit all the many types of faces found in the workplace, you should be provided with a reasonable selection of sizes and models to choose from. If you find that your respirator becomes uncomfortable or significantly limits your vision or ability to communicate or is otherwise unacceptable, you should discuss with your employer to determine whether you should select a different type of respirator and be retested. The selection may include a new make, model, or size of respirator. Many workers need to wear prescription glasses or personal protective equipment such as safety glasses or goggles or earmuffs while performing a job. Any PPE that could affect the seal of your respirator should also be worn during the fit test. If you wear a tight-fitting respirator, remember, facial hair cannot come between the sealing surface of the respirator and your face. Also, people with long hair must make sure it doesn't interfere with the respirator's ability to seal tightly to the face. Did you know that putting on and taking off a respirator requires special procedures? The truth is that putting on and taking off your respirator is a step-by-step -step process. A user seal check is a way to verify that the respirator has been properly positioned on your face to assure a proper seal. It must be performed each time you put on a respirator to check that it has been donned correctly. A user seal check is not the same as a fit test and is not a substitute for a fit test. Let's take a look at how to properly don off and perform a user seal check with your respirator. To put on your respirator, position the respirator in your hands with the nose piece at your fingertips. Cup the respirator in your hand allowing the headbands to hang below your hand. Hold the respirator under your chin with the nose piece up. The top strap goes over and rests at the back of the head. The bottom strap is positioned around the neck below the ears. Do not crisscross the straps. Place your fingertips from both hands at the top of the metal nose clip if present. Slide your fingertips down both sides of the metal strip to mold the nose area to the shape of your nose. To check the seal, place both hands over the respirator. Take a quick breath in to check whether the respirator seals tightly to the face. Place both hands completely over the respirator and exhale. If you feel leakage, there is not a proper seal. If air leaks around the nose, readjust the nose piece as described. If air leaks at the mask's edges, readjust the straps along the sides of your head until a proper seal is achieved. If you cannot achieve a proper seal due to air leakage, ask for help. To properly remove your mask, avoid touching the front of your respirator. It may be contaminated. Remove by pulling the bottom strap over the back of the head, followed by the top strap, without touching the respirator. Discard in the waste container and wash your hands. All types of respirators require inspections. Your company's respirator protection program provides for the storage and inspection of each type of respirator used in your workplace. Remember, all respirators must be inspected for basic function prior to each use. Filtering face piece respirators must be disposed of when they become soiled or no longer provide protection. 
a respirator inspection must include a check of the respirator function, tightness of any connections, and the condition of the various parts, such as the face piece and head straps. Regular care and maintenance of the respirator is important to ensure that it functions as designed. It is important for respirators to be stored properly to protect them from damage, contamination, dust, sunlight, extreme temperatures, excessive moisture, and damaging chemicals. Avoid carrying a cup-shaped filtering face piece respirator in your pocket or in a bag. This could crush or distort its shape and prevent the respirator from sealing tightly to your face, thus compromising your protection. If your respirator is a filtering face piece and the filter material appears to be damaged or soiled, the respirator must be discarded. Of course, there may be other reasons for disposing of a filtering face piece respirator that still appears to be functional. For example, sometimes infection control procedures may require that a respirator be used only once. Remember to stay updated on your company's current guidelines for when to dispose of your N95. You will be trained initially before using a respirator. This training session is intended to prepare you for using a respirator. You may receive additional training during the fit testing process. However, this is not the only time that your employer must provide training. If you use a respirator at work, you must receive training at least every year. This annual retraining will refresh your memory on the formation of skills you need to properly use your respirator and will ensure your protection. It also gives you the opportunity to ask questions and discuss worksite-specific respirator use with your instructor. In addition, you must be retrained when changes in your workplace or the type of respirator you use make your previous training out of date. For example, a process change results in you being exposed to a new hazardous substance in your workplace. You can't remember the information and skills you need to properly use your respirator. This could occur when your supervisor sees that you're not using your respirator properly, or when it's apparent that you don't fully understand or have forgotten important information, or when a situation comes up in which retraining is necessary to ensure safe respirator use. Most workers who wear respirators use them because they are required to do so by their employers in order to protect them from airborne hazards. There are some situations where workers may request to wear a respirator even though respirator use is not required under an OSHA standard or by your employer. If your employer permits this, it's considered voluntary respirator use. If you are voluntarily using only filtering face piece respirators, an N95, you will be provided with a copy of Appendix D of OSHA's Respiratory Protection Standard or the equivalent state plan document, which contains certain precautions to be taken. If other types of respirators are used voluntarily, medical evaluation and proper storage and maintenance of the respirator is required. Remember, voluntary use is only permitted when your employer has determined that there is no airborne hazard that would require the use of a respirator. If you have additional questions about either the airborne hazards found in your workplace or respirator use in your workplace, ask your supervisor or respiratory protection program administrator. If you have any questions about respiratory protection or what your responsibilities are, please feel free to discuss with your supervisor, your program administrator, or your infection preventionist.